Hi, everyone, and welcome to Brian's Horror Corner. I'm your host, Brian, and welcome to this new series in February 2022, where I take a look at the entire Scream franchise. Um, all five movies, including the fifth one that's obviously still at the theater. I'll be having individual reviews on all five movies, and then um, just like my previous uh, franchises, I'll be ranking all of them. Uh, towards the end of the month, the end of the series. So today, of course, we're going to go ahead and look at the very first Scream movie, uh, the groundbreaking one from 1996, directed by Wes Craven. Um, I got the old Blu-ray 3 movie collection here, Blu-ray and digital, um, that the first three Scream movies are on. Um, I own the first four, of course, and then I'll be um, I'll be seeing the fifth movie shortly at the theater. Um, so I'll have a review on that included as well. So um, so before I get into the first movie, I did review this uh, one as part of my October Halloween series a few months ago. Um, but I didn't want to just mail it in and say, well, just check out that review. Um, true to form, I don't half-ass anything. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, it, won't be the, it won't be completely the same review that I had before, but some I'll hit some of the same points. But just wanted to throw that out there in case you saw my my original review um, from October for the original Scream. That was part of my 31 horror movies in October. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So obviously Scream is a 1996 American slasher film directed by Wes Craven and written by Kevin Williamson. Um, it follows the character of Sidney Prescott, a high school student in the fictional town of Woodsboro, California, who becomes the target of a mysterious killer in a Halloween costume known as Ghostface. Uh, the film combines black comedy and whodunit mystery with the violence of the slasher genre to satirize the cliches of the said genre popularized in, popularized in such films as Halloween, Friday the 13th, and West Craven's Zone and Nightmare on Elm Street. It's considered to be unique at the time um, of its release for featuring characters who were self-aware of real-world horror films and openly discussed the cliches of films, discussed the cliches that film attempts to subvert. So so basically, just to get into this uh, movie, uh, high school student Casey Becker receives a, a flirty phone call from an unknown person during which they discuss horror movies. However, the caller turns sadistic and threatens her life. He reveals that her boyfriend, Steve Orth, is being held hostage on her patio and demands she answers questions about horror films. After Casey gets one wrong, Steve is murdered in front of her. When Casey refuses to answer more questions, she is murdered by a masked assailant as her parents come home, shortly after they find her disemboweled, disemboweled corpse hanging from a tree. The following day, a news media discerned of the town and a police investigation began. Meanwhile, Sidney Prescott struggles with an impending first anniversary of her mother, Maureen's murder by her lover, Cotton Weary. While waiting at home for her friend, Tatum Riley, Sidney receives a, a taunting phone call. While waiting at home, uh, Sidney, let's see, uh, Oh, I have that line in there twice in my notes. Sorry about that. After she hangs up, she's attacked by the killer but evades him. Sydney's boyfriend, Billy Loomis, arrives shortly after. But after the after he drops his cell phone, Sydney suspects him of making the call and flees. Billy is arrested and Sydney spends the night at Tatum's house where she receives another anonymous call. So that's the that's the synopsis and the start of, of Scream. Um, just going through the cast, we have David Arquette as Dewey Riley, Nev Campbell as Sidney Prescott, Courtney Cox as Gail Weathers, Matthew Lillard as Stu Mocker, Rose McGowan as Tatum Riley, uh, Skeet Ulrich as Billy Loomis, and Jamie Kennedy as Randy Meek. So, so yeah, that's the original screen from 1996, uh, the setup and the premise of it. Just getting into my review on it now. This is obviously a classic movie. Um, I would argue the best horror movie from the 1990s, quite frankly. I don't think it's close. Um, so I'm just going to touch on some of the pros and some of the cons. I'm not going to go through all the same ones that I did in my original review. But anytime you talk about this movie, you got to talk about the opening 10 or 15 minutes um, with Casey Becker and her boyfriend, the phone call. Um, of course, Drew Barrymore plays Casey very, very well. Um it, like I said in my previous review for this movie, it may be the best opening to any horror movie um, ever. Um, it just so effectively grabs the audience's attention and really gets you into the movie to 
to where you you don't really lose um, focus on this movie. Um, it has great suspense and it still has some humor. Um, it just it just um, it also has gore, of course. So it kind of it kind of has something for everybody. It has comedy. It has gore. It has suspense. All in that opening fifteen minutes of the movie. So very effective opening. Um, the movie obviously has memorable characters, um, starting with Sidney Prescott, one of the great final girls and, if you will, in horror movie history, slasher history. Um, just a very well-developed and acted entire cast. Um, Nev Campbell, Matthew Lillard, and Courtney Cox are the three that really stand out, but there really aren't any any bad performances or bad characters, I wouldn't say, which certainly uh, adds to the benefit of the movie. Um you also got to talk about the self-awareness, meta-ness of this movie. Wes Craven kind of did this a few years before with Wes Craven's New Nightmare, which was a um, a Nightmare on Elm Street um, sort of reimagining or sequel, I guess, if you will, Real World Freddy. But in this movie, it's even more self-aware. Um, it has more comedy and humor in it than that movie did. Um, it just makes for a really fun watch, as well as being a suspenseful slasher movie um just it's just so smart and so original especially at that time it might not be as original now but in 1996 it was um yeah sydney is a great final girl she's a fighter she's a strong heroine um an example of what every final slasher uh final girl should be um i also the killer is also really effective in the movie i'm not going to give too much away but I like the look of them with the black robe and the and the ghost face. Um, it's not overly complex or anything like that. It's pretty simple, but still really effective, especially for this type of movie. Um, really effective score to the movie, too. I don't know that a lot of people talk about how good the score to the original Scream is, but it's just one of the great slasher scores of all, all time. Very 90s. Great music cues in the movie that really add to the suspense and really play on the suspense, actually. Obviously, it's one, a wonderfully directed movie, one of Wes Craven's best movies. Top three for sure, maybe only behind uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. And um, I would say then it's right behind that, actually. I think this, I put this above uh, Last Hill, Last House on the Left and the Hills Have Eyes, some of his other good uh, horror movies. Um, I really like the, the the humor in the movie. It never gets too silly or too, um, you know. It's not. I would. It's not a flat out horror comedy, but there's definitely good good humor in the movie, um, which really works and really adds to the the fun of the movie. Um, and for me, I really enjoy the whole who done it mystery aspect of the movie, especially in this first one. You know, as the sequels go. It kind of becomes a trope and it kind of becomes expected. But in this first movie at that time, in the mid 90s, it really was an effective mystery, an effective whodunit that was really fun to watch and follow. And they give a lot of red herrings, of course, of other characters who don't turn out to be the killer. Um, but it, it it also really works to where the audience and the viewer becomes part of the movie with that whodunit aspect, which, of course, is always fun to be a part of any movie, you know, psych, the original Psycho did that, of course, in 1960. Anytime you can make the viewer part of your movie, you know, it's going to, it's going to live on forever. So, so yeah, I just can't say enough good things about this original movie from 1996. Um, a couple of cons that I have with the movie, which are kind of small, the whole bathroom scene in the high school felt a little forced to me. Um, the exposition dump that we get of the two ditzy girls in the bathroom that, that Sydney's listening to, as well as Ghostface just kind of showing up and having hidden in the bathroom stall. How did he know Sydney was going to be in there? Um, doesn't make a lot of sense. The, kill, the kills themselves are pretty basic, even though there's pretty decent blood and gore, but it's a lot of it's done by stabbing with a knife, except for one kill that has to do with the garage door. I won't give too much more away, but the kills are pretty basic, not overly creative in terms of victims just being stabbed. And speaking of that garage door kill, it's pretty ridiculous, actually, if you think about it. That would never happen in real life, where a garage door would be able to lift somebody up and crush their neck. Um, and also, I'll say that Ghostface is kind of, especially in this first movie, tends to be kind of clumsy. Um, not the smartest or most coordinated killer. 
in a slasher movie. He's easily tricked. A prime example of that's taking a freezer door to the head. <laughs> um, but those are some pretty nitpick uh, cons, really. It, overall, this movie's fantastic, obviously. It's an absolute classic in the horror genre and certainly the slasher genre. Um, Rewatching it again for this for this franchise review after just seeing it a few months ago, it, the rewatchable value is always there for me, even though you kind of know after, obviously, the first time you've seen it, you kind of know who the killer is and how it turns out, but um, it doesn't take away from it. It's just such an entertaining and fun movie that it's always uh, it's always a good watch. It never gets old. So, and I didn't mention it, but also the the final act, the final fifteen twenty minutes of the movie are really intense and really good and really fun. Still having some humor in there. So, yeah, the the original Scream from nineteen ninety six, just a great one of the all time great slasher movies, great horror movies. I got to give it a 9 out of 10 at worst. I'm going to go with a 9 out of 10. Just a really A movie. Um, just love it every time I watch it. So, yeah, that's my review for the original Scream as part of this three-pack um, Blu-ray collection here. Uh, go ahead and comment down below, guys, um, what you think of the original 1996 Scream movie directed by Wes Craven, written by Kevin Williamson. Um, do you like it as much as I do? Do you have more cons with it? Those kinds of things. Um, and please like this video and hit the little notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews on the rest of the series. And please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my great horror content. I have horror content already planned through the through midsummer, so like the next four or five months, which is, should be really exciting, and I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. But uh, thank you for watching this this uh, movie review as part of my Scream franchise for February here. Stay tuned for the next ones. Thank you for watching this video. Stay scared. Bye.